you know, in the 18th and 19th century, independent bottlers were very popular. They existed almost as a to serve the community, mm-hmm. where you'd have all, the distiller, and almost their job was like a, the manufacturer of the product, yeah. and the 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 grocery store or the, the the local store would buy the liquid and retail it to consumers. Um, so you know it wasn't it wasn't they would bottle it themselves. They would buy it in casks and bottle it. Uh, sometimes under the distillery name, sometimes under their own name. Yeah. Then they became a little bit more um, sophisticated and and actually were blending um, different things, but. You know that typically was the way that people purchased right, yeah. purchased whiskey, right, yeah. and then it kind of died out as the distilleries realised that maybe they could do it themselves, and they grew, they became more sophisticated, uh, more commercial. Yeah, distilleries were you know became bigger and more regional rather than you know serving a small area um, in the community. So you know, one would buy the other and, and consolidation happens. That's right, yeah. And that means that the, the, the role of that sort of independent bottler kind of faded out. That's right. I mean, there are, in, there are in fact some quite famous Scotch whiskey brands. That's exactly how they started. I think the most well-known mm. one is Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker was basically, I think, like a grocery store distribution sort yeah. of company. And they bought excess stocks of whiskey, blend them together, got more and more successful, then became even more successful. And this was over quite a long period of time. Though. It was probably okay. over 50, 60, 70 